Welcome once again to ExplainingComputers.com and to another video about classic PC hardware. This time I'm going to look at this, the Scion 7, the world's first ever netbook computer. The Scion 7 was launched in the year 2000 as the first netbook computer to be sold to the general public. Indeed, the Scion 7 was almost identical to an earlier model called the Scion Netbook, which was launched for the mobile enterprise market in 1999. While the Netbook had 32 megabytes of RAM, here the Scion 7 has 16 megabytes of RAM and a 16 megabyte ROM. The latter stores a preloaded operating system called Epoch, which was the forerunner to Symbian. Also in the ROM are a number of preloaded applications that I'll show you later in this video. At the heart of the Scion 7 is a 133 MHz Strung Arm SA1100 processor. As you can see, the machine is also encapsulated in the blue leather, very dark blue leather that goes round onto the back as well. This is a, a very high quality device. I really like the, the leather feel on a, on a computer. If we look on the right of the case, you'll see there is a, a power connector and also a slot for uh, securely stowing the uh, included stylus. There's also a Type 1 or Type 2 a card slot, which just comes out here. And this could be used to add uh, extra memory. This is obviously just a piece of plastic, or you could put in a modem into this slot. On the other side of the machine, there's an RS-232 serial port. Boy, do we all remember those. Uh, which could be used to connect the Scion 7 to a PC. There's also a, a rather nice compact flash drawer, if I can get it out, come on, there we are. Compact flash beautifully held in there. Uh, you could put in a standard card and uh, in fact you still can. This is really the only interface I use on the Scion 7. I use this to take documents from the Scion 7 to my PC and back again. And it keeps the thing compatible, in fact, with a modern PC, providing you use a, a low capacity card that it can actually read. If we turn the machine over, you will see that there is a proprietary docking connector and also a mono speaker, and even more significantly, a backup battery. This is very important, as all data not held on the compact flash card is stored in a RAM disk, and hence you lose all your data if your main batteries go flat and you haven't got your uh, backup battery. We turn things over again and we uh, open the machine up, you will see how nicely the leather fabric curves around and covers the hinge slot. The hinges themselves also have an incredibly solid metal construction, and even after all these years, they still smell of the machine oil that's used to lubricate them. Just below the hinges, the Sign 7 obviously has a keyboard, and it's an absolutely fantastic keyboard. It's probably one of the best keyboards I've ever used on a mobile device, and indeed on, on many computers. I love the fact, for example, it has a, a full-size set of, of cursor keys, which you so rarely get these days. Above the keyboard, there is a little latch which actually turns the machine on and off, although the machine also goes on and off when you close it or open it. It's an instant-on device. And there's also a latch here which allows you to uh, release the stylus, uh, which you can then click back in again. Final big thing I've not told you about other than the screen, which I'll come to in a second, is the battery life. And I can report that when this thing was first manufactured, battery life was about 10 hours. The Scion 7 had a 7.7 inch, 256 color VGA touchscreen. And in addition to a touchscreen area here, 640, 480 pixels, it had touch panels down the edge. If I hit the menu key here and go back to, uh, I was going to say the desktop, it isn't really the desktop, it's a file manager, you can see files on the internal RAM drive, and you can use these touch panels down here to do various operations. We can make things bigger and smaller for a start, which uh, you probably aren't very impressed with, but it was uh, quite exciting at the time. And I could, for example, select a file here, uh, go to uh, that panel and pick up, say, copy. And I could then go to the menu and go to uh, current disk, maybe go from the RAM drive to the uh, compact flash card. And then I could do paste and we copy the file across. So you had very straightforward, very functional file management. All the built-in applications were accessed down the edge here. So I could go to, for example, an email client if you were on the internet. There was a web browser. 
I found on this machine some of the files for the first ever version of explaining computers um, on the web. Um, I think it looks slightly better on a real PC with a, a better web browser and better color reproduction, but it does work here. And I think if I have a really good go, it will actually, please go to the page, it will. And as you can see, it took a while to load a web page. It's having a think. It's getting there. There we are. We really don't appreciate these days that things like rendering a JPEG actually take processing power. And this is just showing how long that used to be. You couldn't show a computer like this, a web page with video, it would just be, be too cruel. Having said that, most of my time on this machine, 99% of it, was spent here in the word processor. I'm sure you would guess that. I'm a word processor junkie, I'm a writer after all. And this was a good word processor. All the basic functions here. If we look in the menu, you've got all the standard word processory things, down to things like a, a spell checker, which was very handy on a machine of this size. We also had a, a spreadsheet. There's just a sample spreadsheet file. We had a, a thing for storing names and addresses. We had a, a diary. I never tend to use those things, but they were there. We had an exciting world time function. Wow, isn't that amazing? We had a calculator. You could do the old uh, seven times six and get a uh, 42. Yes, it worked. And uh, we had this thing called Jotter, which I can't think of a modern equivalent of. I used to put all sorts of notes in here. I love this note from ages ago. Well, on the 26th of June 2000, we saw the completion of a human genome project. It's great to look back at old computers and you see moments in history. Finally, you could add your own applications. There were some extras they added anyway, but uh, you could get other things added in. There was, for example, a sketch program where, as you can see, you can do all sorts of exciting sketching with uh, um, your stylus. This was probably one of the first times you had this sort of stuff. Remember, we went from machines like this to netbooks without having touch screens. So this really was revolutionary at the time and still actually the speed of response on this screen in terms of writing is better than on my current Samsung tablet. You can write quite effectively. So there we are. That is the Scion 7, one of the first real netbook computers that offered some fantastic mobile functionality. The Scion 7 is probably the best designed and without doubt the most rugged computer that I've ever owned. It's also the only computer in my collection that actually uh, smells of machine oil and which has a blue leather on the case or indeed uh, any type of leather on the case at all. And it's uh, interesting if we look at what's going on today with the sort of sub notebook computers and tablets and things like that. There's some great designs out there, but they could learn a lot, I think, from the manufacturers from looking at a device like this. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.